What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicely Chunk of Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. It's now episode 40. If you're new to our YouTube channel or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice review, comment, hashtag, let's go viral, like and subscribe, and turn on post notifications. But today, we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs, kind of give our predictions and everything, you know, really deep dive, do a deep dive into every single series. But before we hop into all of that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today. And today it's going to be Brian Ruiz. Appreciate you supporting our channel. We really, really appreciate it. Now, the Jazz and the Memphis Grizzlies. It's going to be a very entertaining series, if you ask me. I think the Memphis Grizzlies actually match up very well with the Utah Jazz and a lot better than, you know, the Golden State Warriors would. You can put Jonas Valanciunas on Rudy Gobert. I think the backcourt matchups is going to be very interesting. Dylan Brooks and John Morant versus Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell. And there's going to be question marks with Donovan Mitchell and how he's going to play. I know he's missed some time with that ankle injury and everything. So he's going to be a question mark on the offensive side of the basketball. And that could also, you know, hurt them on the defensive end of the ball as well. But Greg, who do you have in that series? I have the Jazz in six. And yeah, like you mentioned, Donovan Mitchell's coming back. We don't know how he's going to perform, but I feel like he will still come out and lead this team and be the anchor through this first two through a first tough first round matchup and i also like the i mean i like the grizzlies i think they're gonna come in but i i think john moran can lead them to two good wins but outside of that i got the jazz and six jazz and six as well for me man jazz and six as well moving on to our following matchup clippers and mavs i think la wins this one by a landslide i think uh you know luka Doncic, he'll put up some great performances but i have some questions about Kristaps porzingis i know those two have kind of had it out for each other this entire season so i'm not really sure how they're gonna play well together and i just feel like la has a lot more star power i mean Kawhi leonard and Paul George, they're one of the best duos in the NBA, especially two-way defenders. Um, LA, they also, they're going to play with a lot of urgency this postseason. I mean, this is a team that got bounced in the second round, and they're looking to prove themselves against, you know, the rest of the Western Conference this year. They also have a very reliable bench, third best offense in the entire NBA, seventh best defense in the entire NBA. And then the Mavericks, they really struggle offensively. I mean, yeah. this is a team, they're 18th in three-point percentage, 22nd in field goal attempts, and they're 17th in points overall. I got Clippers in six, but what about you, Greg? Yeah, I got the Clippers in seven, and the only reason I say that is because the last 12 games of the season, the Clippers finished six and six. They're struggling, and the those final games of the regular season are important because those are the, you need that momentum to get carried in the playoffs, so for that, that's why I have Clippers in six, and I also have another reason is because I think the math, Luka Doncic can get three games on these guys. I think last Last year, what we saw in the bubble and how they performed with KP around Tim Hardaway and that Jalen Brunson playing really good this season. So I think they can lead them to a game seven. They might lose because of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George's firepower, but they will they will they will get defeated and the Clippers can close it out in seven. OK, that's a good take. Following that matchup is the Nuggets and the Trailblazers. And this is a series I think will be a little bit better than what we anticipate. But ultimately, I have the Nuggets in six, and here's why. I, I think Nuke, Nikola Jokic is an MVP candidate. He's going to be a matchup nightmare for this Portland Trailblazers defense. I mean, this is a defense they've struggled in the entire year. They're 29th in defensive rating. Carmelo Anthony has a terrible defensive rating at 117.1. McCullum and Dame, they struggle to guard in the pick and roll. There are liabilities on that aspect of the game. And I think Nurkic is going to have his hands full down there in the post. Like... The Denver Nuggets, one thing I can say about them is not only do they have size, they have guys who are big and can stretch it out for you. So when I look at the roster and you you take into account that they have Aaron Gordon, who's a new acquisition, Michael Porter Jr., who's playing great, especially since the All-Star break, and Nikola Jokic, who's an MVP candidate, alongside JaVale McGee, I got to say the Nuggets are going to beat the Portland Trailblazers in the first round of the postseason. But yeah, what about you, Greg? Yeah, I totally agree with that statement. I think that with having Nikola Jokic, who's playing an MVP season, and they have versatile guys on the on the wings who, who are great off-ball and complement um, Jokic, and with Michael Porter Jr. and the way he's playing this year, I think, yeah, they can lead him to six games and defeat the Portland Trailblazers who struggle in late decision games, late time games, and they close and they struggle with closing. So I got the right. Denver and Denver Nuggets in six. 
Right. This is a team. They don't really extend leads. They can't. They they struggle to win big games. Yeah. And then when it comes to you know just handling adversity overall, nine times out of ten they're probably gonna fold. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely rolling with the Denver Nuggets in this series. But following that series, we're gonna talk about the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm definitely taking the Lakers over the Suns. <laughs> yeah. And it's simply because like. The, for one, the Lakers are coming off of a championship. LeBron James has 40 more playoff games than the entire Suns franchise. So, you know, they don't have much experience in the postseason. Chris Paul, he's a guy that, you know, is a great, you know, all-star caliber player and everything. But he's only got one deep playoff run. And Devin Booker is going to be a question mark. And I feel like he's going to have his hands full with guys like Kentavious Caldwell Pope and Wesley Matthews having to, you know, potentially guard him on the defensive side of the basketball. He could probably still put up decent numbers, but I don't know if it will translate to, you know, wins in this postseason and everything. And then we have to also have to think about, you know, guys like Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond. These are two guys that, you know, have a ton of size and everything. And I feel like DeAndre Ayton is going to be somebody who's going to really struggle dealing with those bigs down there in the post. And then the, the anomaly in the entire situation is LeBron James. I mean, I know he's been dealing with injuries this entire year, but at the end of the day, if I had to go against anybody, I think LeBron James is definitely going to be the person that, you know, can put my team over the top. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think with the inexperience that the Suns have and, um, I don't think they can match up well. This is a terrible matchup. I don't know. I feel bad for the Suns fans who have to watch this series, but I think the Lakers come out and do do what they think, do what they do, and play the play great defense. And LeBron and LeBron and AD will carry them. And uh, and I have them in six. But I really would like the Lakers with their health issues to close everybody out in these series in five. Right. I, I feel like they could to give them more rest. Yeah, I yeah. feel like they could potentially close them out in five. But, it, you know, it just really depends on if these guys are going to come in and take everything seriously from the jump. Exactly. But the next series we're going to talk about is Philly versus the Washington. This is the worst series in the postseason, if you ask me. I don't think Washington deserves to be here. And quite frankly, I don't care too much about them. They're poor on the offensive end of the basketball. They struggle in a half court set. Westbrook and Bradley Beal won't be enough to, you know, overtake the Sixers. No matchup for Embiid on the defensive side of basketball. And the Wizards, they have no depth and no spacing. The 29th and three-pointers made on the year. And ultimately, the Sixers just have a lot more scoring than these guys. And they're better in every facet of the game. So I'm taking Philly in four, and it's not even close. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think what the Philly does on the defensive end, Ben Simmons and Embiid playing at MVP level, yeah, I think it's going to be a landslide. And yeah, they also, and the Wizards struggle on the defensive end, and I think they're going to have they're going to struggle guarding these wings for the for the Philadelphia Sixers. All right, moving on, the New York Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks. This is going to be an interesting series. I mean, I kind of go back and forth with this one, but if you ask me, I, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to take the New York Knicks. I mean, this is a ball club. They're a little bit more scrappy. Uh, they do a, all the they do all the dirty work. They do all the little things and everything. And on top of that, you know, they're undefeated against the Hawks this season. This is a team they're putting up 124 points per game against Atlanta. Um, they're shooting 48% from three, which is a big, you know, margin and everything because this team isn't a great jump shooting team uh, aside from, you know, Reggie Bullock. And then on top of that, they're a lot more united than the Atlanta Hawks. I know at times when the, uh, Atlanta deals with adversity, they tend to fold and, you know, kind of separate from each other and everything. And then on top of that, I feel like Coach Tibbs is going to put a defensive scheme that's going to be able to minimize Trey Young on the offensive side of the basketball. And I think Derrick Rose is going to be able to, you know, bother him on, hit, on the offensive side of the ball as well. So I'm definitely taking the Knicks in six. Knicks and six. Okay, I got the Knicks and seven, and here's why. I think that with the most improved, most improved player of the year in Julius Randle and the ve veteran presence that they have on that Knicks squad around those young guys with adding like a Derrick Rose or Todd Gibson who have playoff experience, I think that will lift them over the Hawks. And I think the Hawks who struggle on defense, they're 23rd in defensive rating, and I think they're going to struggle guarding Julius Randle and these and these rookie guards who have been playing, I mean, these guards around Randle who have been playing very well. All right. Second to last series, Bucks in the Heat. This is a series that I feel is going to be really interesting as well. But in all reality, to be honest, I'm going to go with Milwaukee. Hmm. And 
It's simply because I feel like Miami has been disgruntled this entire year. I mean, they've really digressed, if you ask me. This is a different team. This is not that same team from last year when you saw them in the bubble. I mean, they don't have, you know, Jay Crowder. So he's not going to be able to bother guys at the top of that zone and that press and everything. You could put Iguodala in that area, but he's not going to be as effective. He's more so on the decline in the, in the back end of his career. So I wouldn't really rely on him. And Trevor Ariza, I mean, he's a de good defensive player, you know, 3 and D type of guy guy but offensively i don't think he's gonna have that same effect that jay crowder had you know spacing the floor and everything while also giving you a defensive presence now when it comes to tyler hero and duncan robinson i feel like got the I feel like NBA teams have really figured out these two. I mean, they've been in a bit of a slump. Tyler Hero, he's turned it around a little bit. Um, Duncan Robinson, I mean, you know what you're going to get out of him on a nightly basis. But these are two guys that can't guard. So that's going to be a problem. And on top of that, I feel like Milwaukee has really improved their spacing. They got a guy in P.J. Tucker. He's going to be an X factor. He's a 3 and D guy. Um, on top of that, you know, Drew Holiday's penetration. I feel like that will help Giannis in a lot of scenarios and everything. And then on top of that, I feel like Mike Budenholzer is going to make the proper adjustments this postseason. That might be a bit of a hot take, but, you know, I feel like he's kind of figured it out a little bit this uh, regular season and everything. I feel like it'll translate to the postseason. So I have the Bucks in seven. Bucks and seven. Okay, okay. So actually, you have great points, great points. But I'm gonna go with Heat and six, and here's why: when they faced the Greek uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo this season, three games, no Butler, no Butler in all three, and no reason in two. Giannis stat line was 16 nine and 16 nine and six. So with Bam, who's improved defensively, he's a great interior defender. He can, he's he's very switchable on screens. Jimmy Butler, who plays really good defense, and I think that. They can stop this Bucks. They can stop this Bucks team. This, the stuff that they did last in the bubble was incredible. They they figured out how to guard Giannis, and I trust in Eric Spoelstra over Mike Budenholzer, who can lead this team to to the to win in six games. I think they can lock up. I think Jimmy will take over. I think guys like Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson will be strong for them again, and I think Trevor Reza will give them good minutes on the defensive end. So that's why I have to go with the Heat. I mean, I can't really argue with that all that much. I mean, I one guy that I do want to highlight is Bam Adebayo. I think he can be very effective, and you know yeah. they can put him on Giannis on the defensive side of the ball as well. So we can, we'll see how that matchup turns out. But the last series we're going to talk about is the Boston Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. I feel like this is a series that you know should be fairly quick, but. You know, with Kyrie Irving's comments about how he isn't really focused on basketball all that much, and then, you know, you guys have kind of been derailed with injuries this entire season, I have a little bit of a, you know, concern when it comes to Brooklyn, but ultimately they should be able to get this Celtics team out of here in five games. I think Boston is good enough to uh, win one game with Jason Tatum and, you know, Brad Stevens as their head coach. But, you know, it really also comes down to, you know, how Kimber Walker plays. And I feel like, you know, the amount of possessions and turnovers that are accumulated this series are going to be big difference makers. I mean, the Nets, they only turn the ball over 13 and a half times a game as compared to the Celtics, where they turn it over a little bit over 14 times a game. So that's going to be the difference maker. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I think Brooklyn has a lot more star power. They have two MVPs in James Harden and Kevin Durant, and then they have an all NBA caliber player in Kyrie Irving. And I think that'll be the difference maker at the end of this season. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I have nothing else to add right there. Okay, but yeah, what do you guys think in the comment section? Make sure you guys voice y'all's opinions and everything. We would greatly appreciate it. And, you know, we're going to respond and be engaged with you guys as always. But, you know, aside from that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you're new to our YouTube channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But, you know, aside from that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.